At this point, I would like to re-invite Dr. Ram Chandani. As you all may know, he's our chief of cardiac surgery. He's very passionate about his work. And he's going to share with us coronary artery bypass surgery, time-tested, and getting better. OK, well, hello, everybody. So the first uh, coronary bypass operation, successful coronary bypass operation, was done at this institution in 1964 by uh, Dr. Garrett, Dr. Howell, and Dr. DeBakey, all of whom sadly have passed on. Um, and really, the evolution of cabbage uh, coronary artery bypass grafting started in the early 1950s when James Gibbon invented the cardiopulmonary bypass machine. This was actually uh, from a grant that was given to him by IBM. Um, uh, angiography, uh, Mason Soans in 1962 at the, at, the, uh, at the Cleveland Clinic when he came up with selective coronary angiography. This allowed one to define the anatomy and made it possible to plan therapies. Cardioplegia, which is a solution that allows you to stop the heart safely, was developed in Europe, uh, uh, in Germany by Brett Schneider, and in London at St. Thomas's by Mark Brainbridge. And then in the 1990s onwards, off-pump coronary bypass surgery, particularly useful in high-risk patients, uh, took off. And in the 2000s, minimally invasive coronary bypass surgery, which is an interest of mine. We won't be talking about the different types of bypass surgery, but speaking in general about the value of bypass surgery and who it benefits. So the basis for coronary bypass surgery really rests in three large trials that were conducted in the 70s and the 80s, and they compared cabbage to medical therapy, not to stents or balloon angioplasty because they didn't exist at the time. Less than 10% of the patients in these trials received the lima graft because left internal mammary artery grafting was not routine until the early 80s. And medical therapy then, of course, is, was not what it is today. Um, basically, medical therapy then was nothing. I mean, maybe aspirin, but nothing more than that. These studies were the VA study, uh, the European coronary surgery study, and the coronary artery surgery study. And these are the references. They're easy enough to look up. And really, if you have any interest, it's, a, it's important to know that this is the fundamental basis that underlies coronary bypass surgery grafting. Um, Basically, what they showed is that in patients with uh, triple vessel disease, left main disease, or severe proximal LA disease, and particularly if they had impaired left ventricular function, uh, there was a dramatic improvement in uh, not just symptoms, but uh, longevity, lifespan, uh, if they underwent coronary bypass surgery versus medical therapy. So uh, this, in uh, 1994, Professor Yusuf uh, on the West Coast uh, did a, a, a nice meta-analysis where he looked at seven randomized controlled trials um, comparing cabbage and medical therapy again um, and showed that um, there was an improvement in survival and symptoms. And the benefits were seen most in patients who had the most severe disease, very severe triple vessel disease, left main stenosis, and impaired left ventricular function which is not to say that there was not a benefit in other groups, but this is where the benefit was seen most. So it's important to understand when you look at these trials that the benefits of cabbage were underestimated for severe disease because most of the patients who were enrolled were low-risk patients, simply because cabbage was not so advanced and they didn't want to take patients into trials that the surgeons deemed as being very high-risk patients. And the results were analyzed on an intention to treat basis, meaning you were analyzed as a medical therapy patient if you were randomized there, even if you crossed over into the cabbage arm. And more than 40% of patients randomized to medical therapy crossed over into cabbage arm because of unrelenting symptoms uh, particularly. And like I said earlier, uh, only 10% received an internal mammary artery, which we know today is a very important um, um, element of coronary bypass surgery because of the impact it has on prolonging lifespan. Importantly, in these trials, there was no survival benefit that was shown for cabbage in single or double vessel disease and normal left ventricular function. And the recommendations for future trials is that they should have uh, more patients for whom cabbage is known to be superior. We'll skip over that. So um, 
There is um, the SDS database, and in an earlier talk that Neil Kleiman gave, he alluded to the uh, SDS online risk calculator. If you Google SDS risk calculator, the, the top hit that comes up um, is the SDS risk calculator. You enter a variety of parameters into it. It takes less than five minutes, age, creatinine, so on and so forth, LB function. And in the top right-hand corner will pop up uh, what the predicted risk of mortality and morbidity is for that individual patient based on data that are gleaned from the SDS database, which now actually contains more than 1.65 million patients. It's a very reliable and easy way for you to calculate your patient's risk in the office by simply going uh, to, uh, to your computer, to your browser. Cabbage has evolved over the years as a variety of conduits, the internal mammary artery, saphenous vein graft, radial, gastroepiploic artery, on-pump cabbage, off-pump, minimally invasive. There's all sorts of ways of doing it, and really it's a very complicated discussion, and uh, what is applicable to which patients uh, really uh, depends on the surgeon, on the patient, and so on and so forth, but each of these has a particular application. What I'd like you to pay attention to is the last of these, and that is the, the, uh, the, the hybrid philosophy, um, which is the combination of cabbage and uh, medical therapy and percutaneous coronary intervention. This is something which I think is going to evolve to be uh, 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 a durable uh, therapy that will be applied in a greater number of patients. So PCI claims equivalence to cabbage, uh, and therefore claims parallel benefit over medical therapy. Um, and the first good trial that was done, IT, and there were others, but the first really good one of PCI versus medical therapy was the COURAGE trial, uh, which was published in 2007. Two and a half thousand patients, PCI with optimal medical therapy versus optimal medical therapy alone. And there was no difference in death or MI up to seven years follow-up. So this was a real, uh, uh, this was a real eye-opener because you know up until this time, a PCI had been undergoing um, a very rapid, almost exponential growth. Uh, one thing that was th that was noted very emphatically and is very important to note is that PCI was better, not just better, but much better than optimal medical therapy in this trial at relieving angina, but not at preventing myocardial infarction or death. So if you had a symptomatic patient who had angina, PCI was going to be much more effective than medical therapy at relieving their symptoms. And it's important for you to articulate that to the patient, that this is the reason why we're offering this to you, not because we think it's going to make you live longer. And of course, symptoms are, can be very uh, 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 debilitating. Now, I'm going to spend a couple of minutes talking about the most important trial out there of PCI versus cabbage, the Syntax trial. This, the five-year results were published a couple of, uh, three or four years ago. This was a randomized control trial of drug-eluting stents versus cabbage. There are 85 centers in Europe and the U.S. This was an all-commerce trial to mimic the real world. Uh, about 4,500 patients were screened and 71% of patients were enrolled. Now, this is an amazing figure because if you look at most randomized control trials, the enrollment rate is about 10%, 5 to 10%. Almost 90% of patients will get rejected for one reason or another. And this makes those trials less applicable to the real world um, um, than a trial such as this. Um, <clears throat> half of these were randomized equally, and the others who were deemed too complex for PCI um, uh, were placed in a registry. Now, very important contribution of Syntax uh, was that all of these patients were screened by a heart team. This was the first time that a heart team concept had been evolved. Subsequently, it became implemented for TAVR, but prior to that, the concept of the heart team arose really mandated in the context of this trial at all these 85 centers. So they actually incorporated this into their way of doing business in, when, when, when dealing with other patients. 
the composite endpoint of uh, death, stroke, MI, and repeat revascularization. And the other thing that this trial uh, was, was what they looked at, and the other important contribution that this trial made was that it, for the first time, provided the ability to score the complexity of coronary artery disease, give it a number. Prior to this, you simply look at it and say the patient had very severe disease or not so severe disease or mild disease. It was all very qualitative. Now there's a scoring system, and this is a great contribution that this trial made. And this is a syntax score diagram that shows how a specific number is assigned to a lesion of a particular severity in a particular location. And you know, this shows you that on the left, you've got, uh, you know, you've got three vessel disease here, with a low syntax score and three vessel disease with a high syntax score. And you can see that the severity of disease is much more in terms of the number and severity of lesions than it is over here. Both patients have triple vessel disease. It showed that in, in, in all comers, uh, cabbage had uh, uh, superior outcomes uh, to uh, uh, here, uh, superior outcomes to PCI going out to five years. And this was a, a p-value that was highly significant. And remember, this was in patients with triple vessel disease and includes patients with left main stenosis. In patients who were high, who had high syntax scores, the difference was very, very marked, much more marked uh, than it was in the all comers. But very, very importantly, it showed that in patients with low syntax scores, there was not much difference between PCI and cabbage at five years. So for the first time, we're beginning to see in a well-conducted trial that PCI has an important role in patients with triple vessel uh, uh, complex coronary artery disease as long as the syntax score is low. So this was a very important contribution. You must bear in mind that this was a subgroup analysis, and therefore subgroup analyses are subject to all the criticisms. It, it's not truly powered to show this difference, but it was so similar at five years that you couldn't help draw the conclusion that there's something in this. Uh, we won't talk about the Freedom Trial, uh, but it basically looked at cabbage versus PCI in diabetics and showed that the outcomes were much better for patients with cabbage. Um, although the stroke rate was higher in patients with cabbage. <clears throat> registry data also out there looking at cabbage versus PCI. These are the New York registry data which showed that there was a marked difference uh, with improval in cabbage for patients with triple vessel disease, particularly if the proximal LAD was affected. So why is cabbage better than PCI? This is an important slide. Um, PCI treats an isolated lesion in the proximal vessel. <clears throat> the complexity of the lesion affects the outcome. And we know that from the syntax uh, scoring. If it's a complex lesion, you're less likely to have a good PCI outcome. Cabbage, however, bypasses the proximal two-thirds of the vessel where the current lesion, meaning this one here, and all future threatening lesions may lie. So the complexity of this lesion is irrelevant to the proper functioning of a bypass graft. And this advantage of cabbage will persist even if stent restenosis is zero. So even if you have the perfect stent that never restenosis, that stent will only treat the particular lesion and will never be able to have the advantage that bypass, bypass surgery has of bypassing all of the lesions. <clears throat> So the lemur is what we think may be responsible for this. It's protected from atherosclerosis. We don't know why. It's the unquestioned standard in surgery for coronary disease. And it's a very important metric in the STS rating of our institutions. It's used in greater than 97% of coronary bypass operations. We don't know if it's cabbage or if it's the lemur that's really giving you the benefit. It's impossible to fully dissect the independent benefits of the two, meaning IMA versus SVG, because no one's going to do a trial that compares SVG bypass only versus IMA and SVG. Now, so nonetheless, most surgeons and cardiologists today would agree that the majority of cabbage benefits seems to rest with the internal mammary artery. Uh, this was first pointed out by Fred Loop at the Cleveland Clinic in 1986. 
Um, and a study that was done uh, many years later in 2009 at the Cleveland Clinic showed that in patients who had had a previous left internal mammary artery graft, there was no survival benefit for further intervention, whether it was medical therapy, PCI, or redo coronary bypass surgery. There was no survival benefit if they had a patent lemur from a previous operation. <clears throat> Stents, of course, are constantly evolving, and Dr. Shah spoke to you about the uh, data from the latest generation stents, and we, you know, they are approaching target lesion revascularization rates of 1% or less, meaning they're, they're extremely good at what they do. They treat the focal lesion. <clears throat> And if you look at the guidelines now, um, uh, basically, you can see that the indications for PCI in a single vessel disease and even left main disease with a syntax score less than 22, it's now a class one recommendation uh, uh, indicating that we're getting a better idea now as to where the place of PCI fits in patients with complex coronary artery disease. So maybe future trends would be the lemur for life, stents for symptoms, and best medical therapy. In other words, some sort of hybrid therapy. We don't know the answer to it, but one thing is sure that a multidisciplinary approach like cancer is important. This is not one disease, just like cancer is not one disease. And it would be unheard of today to go to any institution that treats patients with cancer to find that only one doctor is involved in the care of that patient. Almost every patient with cancer now has a multiplicity of doctors and specialists who decide on the best therapy for that patient, whether it's a tumor board or whether it's a more in, informal setting. It would be highly unusual today to find that a single person treats that patient. Coronary artery disease is like that. It's a very complex disease with a huge spectrum of presentations and disease, and it doesn't make sense that only one person would treat it. So you need a team approach and I think this is absolutely uh, crucial. Uh, we're gonna see a convergence of best medical therapy, PCI and cabbage, and uh, we've, we have a pretty good approximation of a team approach at this institution. Uh, Dr. Shah uh, uh, may allude to that, and we can talk about that in questions, but I think this is the way of the future. Thank you. Thank you.